Welcome back to the show. Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of The State of Loud. The State of Loud. The State of Loud. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of A State of Loud. Yes, I'm your host, Chris Jefferson, joined by the one and only AJ X Beast Mo. AJ, say hi to the people, Mike. <laughs> it was good, people. Hey, back at it again. You already know what it is. Sweat, Simple as sweat that. shirt and sweat shorts in the middle of summer. <laughs> in the middle. Hey, don't come I'm coming. I'm not mad. I'm just saying I don't know if I have that level of chill yet. You're gonna hey, you, you going I'm going shopping with you one day. Come on now. I'm going to shop with Hey, we're going right to Burlington. Yo, let's go. Yo, Lord is just great coats. Burlington. Let's go. Ain't no free sponsorships here, bro. No what? shout outs. <laughs> we're going to the store. But ladies and gentlemen, man, we love that you guys are tuning in. And I'm going to ask you up earlier this time that if you're watching, like, subscribe, hit the bell, let it know what's going on. Share with a friend if you like what we've been having all these last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And the train doesn't stop here. Uh, this week's guest, a uh, very good friend of mine. We met probably a couple years back yes, sir. Um, doing some healing circle work, just getting trained, learning what the vibe is. One of the first people I met in this space. Um, I would like to say he's an innovator. He is a person that's looking to push the boundaries of where mental health is going. Um, has his own office in Jersey City. Um, working along some big names throughout different industries to see where mental mm -hmm. health um, and our capacity of learning, consuming, and providing for one another is going to take things. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I want to welcome to the show Dr. Juan Rios, my hey, guy. Welcome go. to the show. Hey, welcome, welcome, you. welcome. I appreciate you. Appreciate being here. Man. Well, first of all, we got to talk about AJ's shirt, headband, Yo, let's operation, go. unity, on, let's peace, go. culture. Let's go. Come on, like, come on man. That's, hey, that's shout, out, shout out to the, um, the club at the school, man. Black Union. Fire. Black The Black Student Union? Yeah, that's what this is. Guess who was What's the president shit? of Stevens when he was there? Oh. Come on now. Let's go. Oh, come on now. Let's go. Engineering in the building. Let's come go. on hey, now. Switched up to business technology. Oh, okay. The okay. middleman between the CEO and the Black, Black Student Union right. of NJCU, man. NJCU. Yes, big shout out. Big we shout moving, out. We moving in and we moving in big, man. Yes, go. sir. Many, many yes, years, but many more years of learning. work exactly. So NJCU, love it. My guy, you are a man of many talents. You kind of got your kind of got your pen dipped in many different inks at the point. Uh, I gotta ask, uh, what are you up to now? Uh, what is interesting you? What's on your mind? And what makes you excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, somebody asked me this question the other day about like, like what gets you really excited? And mm -hmm. I like, I had this conversation with someone about thinking about spaces in a way of speculatively, like what are these what if spaces we create? Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna start off there because Please. that that person really inspired me um, to think about how I show up at different spaces in this what if, mm -hmm. like scenario, these scenarios. So one is like academia, which how do we sort of deconstruct what that is now, mm -hmm. what that space could be in the future. Mm -hmm. The other spaces are really community engaged work mm -hmm. and how do we kind of deconstruct and think about the what ifs or how we create in those spaces differently. And the other one really is around innovation in tech. Mm -hmm. And that includes everything about the human experience and what yes. we're moving towards. So with those three things, looking at life and those engagements from a speculative eye mm -hmm. and, you know, through the lens of like four futures. Mm -hmm. So I'm also a foresight practitioner, yes, researcher, sir. professor, community gay scholar. I'm a consultant for different cities. I'll keep tight. Also consult for different um, AI companies mm -hmm. and uh, tech companies. Yes, sir. Which is exciting. Um, yes, absolutely. All of that is to say, like, how are we choosing to design the future we want to live in. And that's really what I'm excited about. That's oh. what gets me hot right now. That's what gets me, like, fired up. Bro, so you... I'm a futurist myself. I'm just I saying, it, right? Oh, you're, like, you're really? Yeah. Like, well, let's go in. Yeah, let's no, go no, in. absolutely. That's... And, I let's mean, sorry in. if I'm jumping in, AJ. <laughs> nah, nah, I, I got to go jump in right now. Right. Because I'm, I'm glad you took that route. Because <sighs> right now I would say AI is still in its infancy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of nuances that we tend not to think of when it comes to technology, right? Mm -hmm. Um... Being that you work both in academia, you work both in a community, and you work with AI, mm -hmm. what are some of the influence you're seeing from each aspect of both academia and community being put into AI, and mm -hmm. what are some do you think they're missing? All right, cool. So, well, <laughs> I, I, I hear something. I love that. Like, oh, I love that. Right, cool. Because yeah, yeah. yo, this is you don't understand. This is like this is get gets me excited. No, nah, please. So, uh, you know, just just the point of just like uh, information, which we know AI. It's been around since what 1950, mm -hmm. but generative AI, as you mentioned earlier, yes. is what's really been in it's sort of where it's in, in its infancy. Yes, and what we really need to pay attention to is not so much the AI because the AI is just 
data and math, mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence, yep. simply put. Yes, sir. Um, but now what we have is that we have the hardware to sustain the capacity of mm. storage information that's enabled it to do what it does. Yes, sir. Because the algorithms are, are, are simply enabled us to do what we manipulating how we use data mm -hmm. and what we wanted to predict. Mm. But now if we hold the more, the more storage we hold, the more information that it can predict more predictive modelings, mm. mo models and scenario building. Yes. So what I'm excited to really talk about in, in two spaces, one, how we think about digital twins mm -hmm. and how we think about synthetic data. Okay. Those two things about our own community. Yes. So if we think of, um, and I was, it's dope because I was in another city um, with another community uh, my passion is to be able to bring this information, education, and engagement mm -hmm. to uh, minoritized youth mm -hmm. who are justice impacted. Mm -hmm. So for the last three years, actually four years, I've been working with returning citizens on uh, using transferable skills. I don't like to use the word upskilling. Yes. Upskilling implies that the skills you had before weren't good enough. Weren't good, good enough, enough yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I don't care what you was doing before. We all have transferable skills. Yeah. There's always some, I mean, you know, from the dude on the block to the folks who, you know, some of the most bullet people I met is, are, are barbers. Yes, sir. You know, so, you know, there's all Very transferable true. skills. So we, I don't like to create that distinction between mm -hmm. upskilling and transferable skills. Yes, sir. But to be able to provide returning citizens just information on how to use these platforms to increase their micro entrepreneurship. Mm. And also to make sure that they're engaged with it so that way they know both the ethics around it mm -hmm. as well as um, how do they continue to design and create and imagine with it. Okay. Because so often when we think about using these tools with a generative AI art or storytelling with generative <laughs> AR text, you're not considering what you can create with mm -hmm. and imagine with. Because mm -hmm. we don't want it to ever replace. That's right. We want it to be able to say, all right, if I myself never was able to obtain a middle school education, but I have these amazing stories in my mind and I can't afford to pay for, you know, a writer, or I can't afford to have these resources. Then what's a bridge in order for me to just begin to put my ideas out somewhere. Mm. And it's been beautiful. I mean, I seen dudes who got, who got out with her home creating children's books mm. beautifully about, you know, violence prevention in ways that I never imagined, creating sci-fi, creating ideas of reimagining prisons in ways I never thought about. Mm. But it's from their ideas. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's been quite beautiful. In regards to the digital twin space that I'm really excited to always talk about is if we have how much data of our, of, of our lives is really in this block, right? So this, this, this is the basics. Age, name, location, right? Our location is mm -hmm. always on. Um, it's it's AOT, always on technology. Mm -hmm. So you just have to say those magic words and it'll pop up and That's say, right. how may I help you, right? You yeah. got the Alexa, you say magic words and they pop up. Yes, sir. But it's always, always on. Therefore, it's also co collecting sentiment data. Mm. So if my tonality and my voice starts to peak up and I'll be like, peace, culture, unity, what kind of tones are they are they extrapolated wow. from it, or rather, yeah. say peace, culture, or unity, and then they take that data and you yeah. continue to learn from you, and now it's feeding you what it's continuing to do is feed you things that, that you think you will want or need based on the, the 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 sentiment behind the text as well as the data around it, and the more it feeds in, the more it learns, and then begins to create what we consider to be a digital twin. It's a version of you that exists on a digital platform that creates your data analysis, your demographic analysis, how long you've been looking. So if you're looking at something for more than three seconds, it's being able to log it and it puts it in a file. So when you're looking at anything for more than three seconds, and your, your phone already is already, now the new iPhone is integrating all of AI. So all of your data, all of your information is being integrated from a predictive learning modeling um, um, algorithm. Therefore, if there's a digital twin of me that exists, mm -hmm. so I use that agent to do what with it? What would I want to do with this? If I'm chilling my inner Chris, right? I'm like, cool, I got a, I got a podcast with you know Dr. Rios at this amount of time. I'm running late. 
it already knows based on my location, I won't be there mm. at X amount of time. So it'll automatically know I'm not going to, because in my calendar, I'm on your calendar, That's right? That's right. Okay. You have ways on. It's telling you how long it's going to get you there. So it'll tell you when I get there. Right. So it'll automatically send me a message yep. and say, hey, Juan, I will be there at this amount of time. Hold tight. Yeah. So it's executing actions on my behalf without me having to tell it anymore. Yeah. And then, wow. So, so now it becomes a digital twin now. Yes. So if I have to go fly out on Thursday and on my calendar, here's my the time I fly out. This is all this. So now it begins to create my alarm, mm -hmm. play the music I like, mm -hmm. call my Uber, mm. be able to message whoever I need to message that I'll, I'm, when I'm on my way there. Because it knows when you've done it before. Correct, it. correct. And it correct. automatically, it'll log you into your flight, That's, predictively know what luggage you're going to be taking. Absolutely, already, because it's all already information. Already, already been done there, it. Correct. It, that is so, so now it's integrative. You, it, you, you, I'll be honest, for, for a lot of AI and what I've seen it being used for, most of it we hear about marketing right. or creation of art, right? right we right. don't really hear about it when it comes to the efficiencies of operation, mm -hmm. which is, to me, I've always seen it as a means of efficiency. Like you said, if someone has an idea of maybe running a business but doesn't have the knowledge of running all the intricate pieces, this automated system right. could do it for you. But putting it even to a sense of like you having, saying a digital twin, it brings me back to the movie... Um, Oh, what's that movie? Joins. Tron. Oh, it's the Tron. movie Tron yeah. with Clue, <laughs> right? Like he had a digital twin that could help him build the stuff That's out, right. right? That's right. Like so when so when I when I when you say this to me, it I have two different thoughts. Mm. I have the one thought like, oh man, having a digital twin with me would be fantastic because I can get more work done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Then the other part of me is what interactions and information and would I be receiving if I still had to do those things. So it's almost saying to yourself, you have to prioritize what the interactions matter to you and which ones don't. Right. And, and once you can do something like that, you can say, okay, like sending a text that I'm running late, there's probably very little emotional reception interaction I'm going to have in sending right. that. Um, but do you say a joke back? And maybe that's a joke that's funny. And right, then right. I have missed that interaction. So it's it's something that I, I both embrace and excited yeah. about, especially as someone that runs multiple businesses and entities. To me, have another version of me, I'd be like, oh, this is sick. Right. I could go home and my, he could run right. part of my business. But I'm also very big on relationships with it. Mm. Um, and then it gets me to the other side of AI, where you're talking about generating things and creating things. <sighs> I believe, we, I'm not sure if I had this conversation the other day with AJ or we had it together where because our computer systems are able to predict um, what we do, like you said, if you look at a picture for long three seconds, it's going to keep it. So if it checks your tone, so it says, okay, he sounds upset. He's using these words. He's done that before. Last time when he did that, he spent a lot of time on this type of content. I'm giving him more of that content because that's what he wants right now. Right, right. Is it limiting us to the exposure in which we're having to different means of just entertainment and education in the world because like there's a big part that says you are the cumulative sum of the circle in which you're a part of that's the right and that you only know about things that are able, um available to you if you had exposure mm -hmm. so is having ai and algorithms kind of feed you more of what they know you like limiting the input that you may have of exploring new pace of the world and how do you think that can affect someone? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we think about the information bubbles mm -hmm. with sort of terminology is being used around. Yes, sir. There, is where you're continuously being fed that same information, that reinforcement that creates reinforcement bias that yes, that, that exists. So mm -hmm. if I believe that, you know, uh, the earth is flat, for example, and if I look longer than three seconds at multiple videos, then it'll reinforce that the earth is flat and create other positive videos that, that are positively pushing that the earth is flat. Mm -hmm. Cool. So how do we move or break outside that information bias? So there's already studies that's been done on this. Mm. And uh, one of them in particular is that they've studied, and I'm just going to be you know 100% transparent because this is safe space. So they've, they've literally looked at this in regards to how um, extremism happens. Yes. And um, how extremism in regards to culture, how extremism in regards to Religious information, mm -hmm. and they researched thousands of people, and what they found is that um, information bias is not the 
the biggest influence to reinforcing what you sort of like the reinforcement bias that exists. Mm. It's not it. The biggest impact and influence, not what you find on your phone, but is the five piece of people closest to you. Jeez. So look at the five people closest to you. So think about this, right? Think of the five people who are closest in your life. And you don't have to say mom, dad, you know, mm -hmm. it's like your friend group. Yes. Okay. People, your friend, friend group who, who, who you'll call when something goes down. Yes, sir. <laughs> you need, yes, you sir. need that one phone call in the middle of the night. You got yes, that one sir. phone call to call. Come pick me up. Come pick yeah, me up. Yeah. <laughs> These are these five people. Think of who they are. Yes. Right? And then think of how diverse they are. Mm. Diver not just in race, you know, um, ethnicity, et cetera, but diversity of thought. Yeah. Diversity of politics. Mm -hmm. Diversity of religion. Yeah. Right? And the people who have the most diverse groups are the people who fall out, who have the most protective factors against information mm. bias, information bubble, no matter what's being fed to you. Because what happens is this. Well, we obtain information through, let's just use social media as an example. We obtain information from social media. We scroll and scroll and scroll, but then it makes you think. And then you take those deep, dark thoughts and you bring it to those people closest to you in conversations. That's those conversations that happen behind closed door that you people don't want to hear. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody has those conversations. Oh, yeah, you're on the verge of argument. Yeah. You feel like, I don't know yeah. if I can trust somebody with this, but yo, I heard this and I'm wondering about that. And then that person you trust with that information will reinforce or will challenge you to look at something absolutely. more differently. That has been the biggest protective factor to towards making sure that we don't move into extremism. Wow. So that's, I mean, that's, that's extremely enlightening. It also makes sense at the same time, because like when I look at my, my close circle, I have, I have friends, like I look at where we sit on the, on, on the scale yeah. and it's like, okay, like it, like here's my one friend that I feel like is right in the middle of both. And then I got a buddy that's, he's on one side of pushing like really sensible and then you got me that's like i'm willing to take some high risk let's go all the way <laughs> and then i look at more friends and i'm like oh and then i have two more friends that are even further pushing than me and it kind of puts you in that space but one thing that aligns with all of us is we're very passionate about the things that we love right. and we're open to new experiences and mm -hmm. supporting each other but we will sit down and challenge one another there you go very very much like they'll call me like you're crazy are you serious right. and i'm like Crazy, but sit down. Right. Hear this out. I need right. you to see, listen to this. When you get to places of extremism, is it the fact of it's a combination of both where you're you're in your information bubble and your That's actual right. friends are also That's in the right. same bubble? There you go. Wow. Precisely. When those two things like are are aligned together, <laughs> that is the true information bubble. <laughs> so think of like a Venn diagram, right? So if we have a mix here and a mix here, then yeah. you have that little bit of yeah. room where you can be able to have your own, you know, intellectual, independent thought. Yes. And challenge it. But when they do this and they coexist in that way with yes. these two worlds, mm. then where's the it room? It makes it right. dangerous. Right. Absolutely it dangerous. It makes it so dangerous. And it almost, and if, uh, it's, it's funny, it's funny you say that because in my mind, I'm like, oh, so the way to solve the disagreements we have in this country of mm. extremism is to just make people move next to each other and talk and integrate your, your communities. And it's there, but there's been studies on that, right? It I forgot the name studies. of the, forgot the name of the gentleman, um, older black gentleman. He like got like 200 clan members to like turn in their robes. And all he did was just get, become their friend. Oh, there was a, there was a, there was, wasn't there like a, a film off, off of this? Yeah. There's a film about it. Yeah. But I, yeah. Black, so, yeah. black Klansman? No, nah, that's, different. that's different. But there's a gentleman, he yeah, I forgot his name, older yeah, gentleman. Yeah. Um, he grew up in a time where like in the south where the clan we ran rapid, that's rampant. Right, and that's right. he's like he couldn't remember he couldn't understand as an eight year old why someone would hate him just because of his skin. And so he spent most of his life trying to figure that out. And he openly went to people and openly went to clans members and, and became their friends. And mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, I can't do this anymore because like you're, you become one of such a good friend of me. I can't believe right, this anymore. Right. And it turned into rules. And it shows to Jeez. me that with that theory you're saying is exposure to the things in which you are unfamiliar with things you may fear um, is the only means of truly educating yourself and maybe even eliminating the bias. Right. 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 Wow. So now you're moving into, um, the truth and racial healing work. So now, yes. now we're going to go, like, that's a whole other area where we're talking about. Dr. Rios, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. But no, please, I mean, we'll, please we'll, continue. We'll, we'll move into the truth and racial healing, right? Yes. And then when we're thinking about 
and even 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 into reparations. Yes, sir. I would love to talk about too, but that's another day, another yes, story. Another we story. Can talk about it. Um, Dr. Gail Christopher talks about the five pillars and those mm-hmm. five pillars to reach um, racial healing. Mm-hmm. So we, separation is one of them mm-hmm. because it, we we were separated by design. Mm-hmm. That's by design. I mean, yeah. I'll have to mention black codes. I'll have to mention redlining. You know, record, we could keep going, right? Um, uh, who was it? Moses, Alexander Moses, um, I remember his first name, out of New York who built the bridges to be low on purpose so you didn't have to drive buses into public pe- spaces like beaches. Mm. So who are the main people who were carrying public, public transportation, mm-hmm. right? So that was one of the ways by design to not explicitly exclude people, but if public transportation doesn't have access to spaces, then how do I? Mm. If that's the only, if I can't afford gas or car, or yes. et cetera. Mm. So, and, and that was an over and over again, all throughout New York City, yes. whether Brighton Beach or wherever, et cetera, which those spaces still remain to be homogenous. Mm-hmm. So to your point, so, uh, separation is one of them, economy, uh, narrative change, um, uh, racial relationship building mm-hmm. and law. Mm, so okay. those are the five pillars. It has to because certain things doesn't just happen yes. with the relationships. We have to make sure that it is solidified. Yes, you're correct. And also separation is another piece of it. Yeah. I mean, New Jersey schools are what still one of the most segregated, segregated school districts yeah. uh, in the country. That's where I graduated yeah, from. It, it's, it's, it's divided crazy over there. Yeah. And it it it, it kind of yeah. um we're, we 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 dove, in, dove into that before of trying to understand how it can still be present today. But like I said, the division is not just because of one factor right. of people wanting to live in an area. It's like, you may have to live in this area. You may not have access to those things. There may be things keeping you from going there that kind of still contribute to it today. And I think that's where we sit on the wide scale fight of trying to change these things right. through so many levels. Um, it's almost like you need like the Avengers to attack each one of the five. <laughs> Cause we got a vein, uh, a Thanos glove, <laughs> uh, the five pillars. <laughs> And he's like, let them segregate. That's kind of wild, stone. though. Seriously, yeah. bro. We gotta go find a tesseract, bro. Yo, bro, yeah. I'm just saying, like, hey, I didn't. I'm not saying that's what the movie's about. I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying it, can make an it, argument it for it. Argument. Listen, for it. we could have a whole series on. But it's it's uh, it's amazing how the the human mind wraps around all these concepts mm-hmm. and almost looks at it. Um, because I was. Oh man, there's so many places I want to go in this conversation. I'm trying to keep it zoned in, um, but I, I do have to bring up um, the conversation around mental health and the the influences of who you are mm. and what how it affects you. Because being the fact that you are working in spaces of AI and entertainment mm. and different media forms, um, how do you see the new forms of entertainment, new forms of media consumption affecting people's perceptions of self and the world around them. All right, now we get some good stuff right here. This is, <laughs> yes, this is, this is, this is dope. Um, so let's circle, come full circle with this. And let's go back to the digital twin as I kind of um, bring, this, bring this home. Um, if there's a version of myself that exists and operates independently from me, from an official standpoint, mm-hmm. what happens to that twin when I die. So let's think about that. Right now, um, in September, we know the iPhone is coming out with the fully integrated mm-hmm. AI phone. That's now. 10 years from now, exponentially speaking, the technology um, about who I am and what data it collects will be exponentially going. Could just you know, create that foresight, like, yep. to, you know, like futuristic that we are. Mm-hmm. And if there's a version of myself that interacts with friends, family, coworkers, and I die, is it ethical for that part of me to continue? So this goes back to identity and mental health. Yes. Because I'm going to circle back to this because mm-hmm. I, we, we talk about it the way it is now, but we're not talking about it really where we're going. Yes. So our understanding of grief in the digital world is almost... Never talked about. <laughs> no, so even saying those words together right now, I'm like, bro, <laughs> right. what? Right. So let's take something, um, let's take a very low, not low level, but let's use the example of pets. Mm-hmm. Right? Pets are a part of 
many, many families, mm -hmm. many integrated families. Yeah. If my pet, we have a lot of support animals now. If my pet passes away that was with me for 15 years of my mm -hmm. life through core experiences, is it okay for me to have a digital version of that pet and then that information transplanted into another pet to wow. have the same memories? Wow. So BCIs exist, right? Brain control yeah, interfaces. Yeah, absolutely. They exist. We, yeah. we don't have to say that they don't. They do. But <clears throat> if, in fact, I can have all of that in the storage and transfer it to another similar pet, okay, same kind of breed, et cetera, mm -hmm. and have it continue on with the memories of my previous pet, would that be ethical? Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, you know, it's a question for debate, yeah, for discussion, because how we understand grief is now on a different continuum. Absolutely. How we understand our identity and mental health is on a continuum. I firmly believe if you want to talk about what the future of, of healthcare is going to be in mental health care, if you ask me, tell your doctor, what do you think it is? Yes, I'm please. going to say it's three things. One, I do, do believe it's going to be XR, which is extended, you know, extended reality, mm -hmm. includes AI. I believe it's going to be integrated with psychedelics mm -hmm. and with AI. Those Yo. three things together is going to be the future of healthcare. <sighs> and I want you to sit with that. If I'm able, and give you one example, if I'm able to immerse myself, yeah, you remember Iron Man. Okay, cool. Let's talk about Iron Man. Let's bring I'm, 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 I'm already, listening. I already know where you're about to go with this. I'm, I'm okay, listening. you remember when he opened up, the movie opened up with him being 19 years old and his parents went away, mm -hmm. right? And they went away and he didn't tell his dad what he wanted to say. Mm. And it was a fully immersive XR experience where he was able to interact with his parents again, right? But it, it, going back into that moment, reliving that last moment he had it with his parents before they died and then having a corrective moment there with them. You remember that scene, yeah, right? Remember that scene, yep. Imagine if now if the cost, the, the only difference between that being actualized now is just cost. Yeah, so that's I it. Just, I I got make it affordable. I gotta I gotta I gotta like I gotta call a timeout because <laughs> I need like I'm yeah. about to have a 404 error and shut down. <laughs> Wait, yo, just because 404 I have is to. Crazy. I, yeah, it's crazy, right? Blue screen, <laughs> but like <laughs> I I hear what you're saying, but I and I like for some reason the viewers love when I freak out over what people say, <laughs> so I get I guess. <laughs> They always make comments like, yo, he had to pause. And I'm just like, <laughs> but seriously, so what you're saying to me is like, AJ, give me a minute, bro. It's like, you're over there tripping out too. You're just, no, you just no. can't see on camera. Yeah, AJ's with me. He knows so, exactly what I'm no, talking about. I know about. what you're He's saying. I know you what you're it. saying. But what you're saying to me is that the way in which people can heal from traumas, whether through, through childhood or adult experiences, mm -hmm. is through actual, like you said, XR experiences where you feel, see, hear, and are immersed in the experiences and can correct the experience that manner. Absolutely. So the whole thing where they're like, oh. like, do you know what I'm saying? Is like, That's, it's like, oh man, when I was eight years old, this happened to me, and it really affected me for my whole life. Your therapist is like, all right, let's scan his brain, let's get that memory and punch him in. Let's see if you can change this. My question about that is this. At that point, will it matter if the memory was real or not? It doesn't matter if it was real or not. That's the crazy part. We do it now. So EMDR is is, is just that. Yes. EMDR. <laughs> so so this is so we're not speaking sci-fi. I, I, I know you're not, right? but at the same time, like, this that's is the it. craziest part. That's it's like you'll actually be is. able to like, physically live it. Yes. That's EMDR, the most mind-boggling part. EMDR, so from an ethics standpoint, what EMDR is supposed to do is take you as close as possible back yes. to that moment yes. so you can relive it yes. or, re, or, or rewire it as yes. your adult self now. Now that you yes. know what would you want, like to have said or seen. Yep. So you just take that, move and it you, outside of your head, yes. and, ex, and create an external and environment. That's, and that's, 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 that's mind-boggling because like when you, when you talk about psychedelics and coming in, a lot of people, when they talk about certain psychedelics they take, actually physically and mentally go back to That's it right. so now you're saying forget all of that you could just do it digitally and add the and, psychedelics and at yo okay so it's, it's those three things sign me up where, the where, where's the lab get it's bring the in the three. white coats it's i'm the down three. for this it's the three. My, my, it's biggest Jesus. Thing, my biggest That's thing so is great. Jeez, That's so great because I, I definitely see the pro right because Damn, yeah, that's like super, super fast healing you realize, right there. Like, yeah, that, but then, it's not even like what you, would be the the con of that. Though? You you say super fast healing. 
I don't even think speed is what I'm really addressing. Yeah. I think it's more along the lines of like the, the capacity is, yeah. in which people will be able to heal. Because right now, one of the biggest barriers mm -hmm. is that's, that's I'm unwilling to address yeah. a trauma because I don't feel safe enough in a space to that's actually right. go back to that place or and feel it. it. Or afford it. But if you're Jeez, saying to me, like, true. you can literally, like, we get to a place where there's universal health care and mm -hmm. they include uh, mental health and therapy and stuff in it, too. You can literally say, okay, like, hey, this guy had a bad time. This is what really affected him. He ended up older and homeless and using other means of distractions for his, his traumas. Let's go figure out what this is. Mm -hmm. Dive in deep. Go address it. Change it. And then you can literally... Change the way that we rehabilitate people. A hundred percent. So we know about the brain already, right? And about uh -huh. neuroplasticity and how to create, just ignite different parts of the brain. Again. Yes. We, know we, we, we do that now. Oh, absolutely. Right? Every day. Then we know about um, how we are able to utilize EMDR to go back and recreate these memories and address them in a way. But those takes how many sessions? How oh, many, yeah. Oh, my God. And then under to, to be able to do, you know, TM, you know, transcranial uh, um, uh, stimulation. Yes, that takes money too. Yes, right? but if we're able, and I'm, again, I'm not saying there's no magic bullet. I'm just saying that there's going to be a future in which oh, absolutely. those three things will exist because psychedelics now are moving more towards becoming FDA approved. Oh, absolutely, and it shows so much efficacy. We are the PTSD. Yes, but if and now now the AI piece that we didn't bring in here. No, no one does. So now if we bring in the AI with the XR with the psychedelics. Then now this the AI is beginning to learn and change the engagement so that you it pushes you as well to be able to get what you need out of those experiences. Yeah, and learning from you. It almost acts as a librarian from Ready Player One. Ready Player One. I like a lot of these movies, it's, as you can see. It's the time of my was, life as a video game. I was going to go uh, to Alter Carbon too. Yeah. Alter Carbon, another yeah. great series. Bro. Another great series Bro. where you're able to go back into those memories, yeah. but they also use, uh, I won't use psychedelics, but they use the chips. Yeah, the chips that's, and also some chemical to put you in. It's, it's crazy because we just got into the Neuralink too. So that's Bro, and, the and that's the beautiful Yo, part. And see, is, Elon, ain't, real, Elon yeah. ain't crazy. He's not, man. He's just, he's trolling just like his homeboy Kanye. Hey. Just got to be patient. That might just be a sleeve. That's an opinion of May <laughs> That might just be a sleeve. Yo. That might be his sleeve. Yo, I'm yo, you, yo, that just might be. His nah, this is scary thinking about yo. it now, man. bro. Yeah. But no, this is. But oh my god, we're getting there. What's stopping us from getting there? It's, it, so, speculatively <sighs> speaking, speculatively speaking, we can see that it's all. It makes sense, and it's mm. already here. It is. We're just these not are applying things, it the way that we could. We're not putting a piece together. And we. The only difference is. The only difference is, is the hardware is not there yet. Yeah, the chips aren't fast enough. That's the only reason why we have the GPT now is because of Nvidia, right? The only yo. reason why we have it. And now that NVIDIA has come out with the new one that takes, what, a thousand times more, holds a thousand times more power? But that's... If we reach quantum computing... Oh, yo, you're, yo we're going there, no ladies limit. and gentlemen. There's none at that point. There's no limit. And a lot of people even argue if we computing. can even get there. Yeah. No, people, yeah. I know we're getting but there are people <laughs> arguing against it at this point. And it's like, the beauty of it is this, that there's conversations around the possibility of these things mm -hmm. and that the only thing limiting us is the hardware and advancements technology for us to get there, which then is going to drive people to think outside the box of how we can even accomplish to have the technology to achieve these things. It's almost like we, we're chasing the carrot and we should be grateful we have a carrot. Mm -hmm. Because for yeah. so long, if you're just driving to try to develop a technology without a carrot in front of you, you're, 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 it's like it's like you're driving on a GPS, you got no destination. That's what I'm saying. And you know what's beautiful about this conversation is that um, you are a scientist by trade, right? Yes, you sir. are a scientist. I am far from a scientist. I, Bro. Far from it. But you know what's beautiful is that we're at a stage now in our in our lives where we're democratizing this information. And my oh, yeah. passion, going back to the question, is being able to have these conversations with justice impacted individuals who are often forgotten about. Mm. Folks who you 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 can't even get jobs because of their yeah. background. But we got to make sure that they're part of this conversation now yes. and not wait until quantum computing happens and who will be controlling those narratives. That's, uh, yo. So that's my passion now. It's not waiting for it to happen. It's being able it's to say, into the yo, I'm a, I'm a social worker Yes, and right by trade. And not by no means am I creating these levels about disciplines, but I'm saying from a, from, from a, a pop culture standpoint, there's a stigma that exists that social workers 
will never be able to have a conversation with a scientist about those things. And that's when we got to be the ones in these spaces. You have to. You you. you know? It's. I'm going to start by saying I, I I believe it's a blessing from my educational background to start at my academia in a space where I was trained to be the middleman between mm. the scientists the community, and the community right. because now I can sit here and have these conversations with you and relay them to anyone. With that being said, the statement you, the value of the statement you just made goes beyond most people's understanding of, of, of how important that is right. for not just humanity now, but for our future mm. because right. There's more to this life than just numbers. And if we continue to believe that that's not true, we will continue to go in a way that serves not us as a people, but the system as a whole. Right. Dr. Rios, yo, that was the craziest 30 minutes of my life. Like, <laughs> I feel dope, like, man. I feel like we're sprinting for like, for, you're like, what we're we going to do. We're going to sprint for a half hour. I'm like, I never sprint that long. And like, you'll catch up. You'll be See. fine. And then now I'm here. I'm like, Oh, Crap, we made it. I guess we're going to have to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> you guys got to do it again oh tomorrow. Oh, my God. Uh, Dr. This Rios. Is, this was dope. This was amazing. Uh, for the, I appreciate you coming out so much. Um, I'm still uh, in a state of processing everything we talked about. Mm. But before we go, um, I want to give you some time. Your camera's right there. Tell the people what you got going on. How can they follow you? Um, and any message that you want to share with them. I definitely, 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 I want to shout out all my people I'm collaborating with, whether it's at uh, Real Therapeutic Solutions, whether it's at Empower You, my people's at Empower You, Marlon Gray, all the work that we're doing together. That's what really makes me excited. I mean, when you have somebody behind you who's able to say, go, these are all your ideas, go, there's nothing like that. Having people on your team like that, uh, value and appreciate all my people at uh, iPath Institute of uh, Personal Transformative Healing. Thank you. Follow us, follow uh, me. Uh, LinkedIn, my Instagram is pretty weak. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get you there. We're gonna so get, you. get me up there. So Juan Rios, Dr. Juan Rios at LinkedIn, Juan.Rios, JR at Instagram. Uh, looking forward to connecting with everybody. Uh, holla at me, Juan.Rios at shu.edu. My educational one, and let's go. Yo, thoughts, geez. ideas, let's collab. Let's go, let's ladies go. and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Before we let you guys go, AJ, do you have anything for the people to close them out? All I'm going to say with this whole podcast, don't just understand it. Understand it, okay? I'm going to just leave it there. <laughs> understand it. Who is this I guy? Like, I love that. Yeah, he's don't understand it. He's a sleeve. He, he was understand from another dimension. It. Understand he's it. He's a sleeve right now. No, Bro. I'm, the, I'm the sleeve maker. The sleeve Bro. Maker. <laughs> Yo, wildest show, wildest <laughs> show maker. ever. But ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed Yo. this show as much as I did, I'm gonna ask you guys again: like, subscribe, hit the bell, share okay. with somebody Let's that you it. think would enjoy and open their minds up to the things that we're talking about here today. Um, it's free, Dr. Ron Rios. I want to thank you again for coming out, Appreciate my guy. You, this has been an amazing time, and I cannot wait to continue this conversation. Uh, so, without further ado. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to see you next time. As always, it's nothing but love. Peace. Peace. Yeah.